Queen Bee VC. Um, so if you have any questions um, and you might be a bit shy to um, talk live and unmute, you're more than welcome to post it up in our Queen's um, chat. And um, we'll be looking at the chat as well while we um, upskill you guys. Make sure you're all ready um, for Mint Day because we, we know how scary it might seem um, in this whole new world, like I'm new myself to it all. Um, so I'm with you guys all the way. Um, you know, I still get anxious and think, oh, you know, am I, am I going to be all sorted? But um, the more we talk about it and have these chats, the, the more we um, are reassured that, you know, we're in a safe space and we have a wonderful community behind us. Um, and we have just a huge amount of people the kings and the queens are willing to just help upskill, learn, grow, share. You know, there's no withholding of information. It's just a uh, one-stop shop right here. So we are very, very lucky to be uh, in such an awesome community. Just see who else we've got in here. Cool. Hi, Nelly. Oh, hey, Shana. Hello. How? Got all the kids. Oh, yeah, no worries. All good. Tuning in there. Sweet as. Be too long, fam. Okay, so we're going to make a start. We're going to go ahead. We're going to start off with our bro, um, our King Beaver Blockchain Moldy, who has um, offered um, to share some knowledge with us in regards to um, his journey in this space um, and give us some tips and a little guideline as to um, how he's navigated his way through this space. Um, and if you do have any questions throughout, like you're welcome to unmute yourself and um, ask him and he'll probably provide a, uh, a space and a time where you can ask questions as well. But um, yeah, if you have a question, just unmute and then um, yeah, we'll just go from there and let it flow. Um, hey bro, hey blockchain, you there bro? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora everybody. Um, yeah, so awesome to be here. So thank you um, firstly for inviting me um, over here because I did kind of ban myself from the Queen's chat. Um, and let our um, other queens that are um, server mods uh, look after our ladies. But um, thank you. Firstly, I just want to say thank you um, to the ladies who invited me over into the space. And thank you to all the ladies in this space um, that are willing to be here and, um, and have a listen and listen to my whakaaro. Um But yeah, touching on um, what Malentino, Malentino was saying um, about asking questions. Um, I do find that the VCs get really, really quiet a lot. Um, and I like, I do work a lot online, um, and I don't like, feel like I'm talking to myself sometimes. So if you do want to ask a question, um, just unmute, jam it in there, k 2 pi. Um, and if you do, if you do, if you do, if you are feeling shy, um, that's k 2 pi as well. That's k 2 pi, but have a try, have a try before you, um, you know, even just pushing the mute button on and off before you put your question in the chat, just, just have a, have a crack at it. Um. But yeah, feel free to unmute whenever, pull me up and um, and have a question, ask a question. Um, but to start, like how I got into this whole space. Um, the first time I ever heard about crypto was Bitcoin. Um, I heard about it maybe like seven years ago and I thought it was a gaming coin. It was about $100 at the time and I didn't even think about it for another couple of years. Um, sort of just flew over my head. Um, but I kind of went through a phase, maybe like 2019, when lockdown started sort of happening. I went through a phase of 
basically wiping everyone off my personal Instagram and following a whole heap of motivational speakers. Um, and that obviously included Gary V, but a lot of other people or motivational speakers that I was following were talking about the Web3 and the blockchain space. So I wanted to kind of know more. Um, so what I did for myself is, um, and I'll chuck it in the chat too, I, I downloaded a course um, and it was actually a coding course. It was actually for coders. But the theory, um, I didn't do the prac, but the theory behind the course basically gave me all the information um, to understand what was going on. Um, and then early last year, I decided I was going to, I suppose, help educate our whanau. I really wanted to be in a space um, that helped our whanau not be left behind because I do feel like our, um, our Māori people do get left behind a lot. Um, so I wanted us to be at the forefront. So I decided to create um, the Blockchain Māori as an Instagram account. Um, I chucked it up early in the year. Um, and no content on it just sort of had coming soon and then I kind of left it for a bit and kept learning about it and investing in um, coins like Solana and Ethereum and Litecoin and things like that and um, I looked back one day and there was quite a few followers um, just following the page with no content on it so I kind of decided hey I've got to do what I said I was going to do now and like give these people some content um, so yeah we basically ran the first bit of content that came out was uh, a competition so we ran a competition and I, I, I was just thinking in, in ways of how can I get people to do like you know I can't ex I can't exactly explain how to sort a wallet out you know without doing a video but how can I do it in slides um, that people will understand um, so I thought I would I, I was actually purchasing a Graphgram so I was part of the Graphgram crew and like that was a lot, a lot of learning for me, um, and how to transfer funds, how to swap um, coins to another coin, um, how to bridge and put a, one coin to another onto another network, and things like that. Because it was a little bit hard to start off with. Um, so I done that, and then I just saw a whole bunch of NFTs for like two cents, three cents. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy. 100 nfts and i'm going to give away 100 random nfts um so i did and i and i and it was purely to basically because everybody likes giveaways or everybody likes sort of free things on instagram i thought sweet why not like if i'm giving away 100 nfts people are almost going to be forced to figure out how to get a wallet so they can have one of these nfts um and it worked there was yeah there was hundreds of people that actually um come forward and i just basically said this is how the giveaway works if you like it you like it if you want to share it you can share it um but the first hundred people to dm me your wallet address i'll send you an nft um and that's basically what happened and that that basically sparked the community space um for myself um and that was what got me interested or more interested in pushing um pushing the space for our whanau because i'm i come from a background of rangatahi work um, so I work with rangatahi, so you see some of my posts are kind of tailored for rangatahi, but for our people as well. Um, so that created a sense of wanting to um, create spaces of safety um, online. Because once we get to the metaverse, once all our tamariki and everybody's in the metaverse, um, they're going to want to, you know, be different characters and everything like that. Um, and are they going to have a connection to Te Ao Māori within the metaverse was my question. Um, so yeah, at the moment I've just been teaming up with a few people to see what we can do, what we can have ready in the metaverse um, for our whanau. And yeah, basically it kind of just grew from there. A few other people reached out um, and things like that. Hey Crypto, Te Rā Whiti Roa, um, and Hidden Figures. Um, and we all kind of um, share each other's each other's content because it's quite similar content, but it's also very very different, and we're very very different people. Um, so that's yeah, that's kind of how like the blockchain Māori sort of started. There is um, there is a five year goal um, for us. We actually want to create our own blockchain. We want to create our own blockchain, or I want to create our own blockchain. I want to build a team for us to create our own blockchain and that's the five to seven year goal 
um, and a lot of things, a lot of tokens on top of that. Um, but basically, I suppose, kind of bringing it back to um, the basics, that's really how my, my journey, kind. my journey is still happening. I'm still in the baby steps of my journey right now. All of us are. Um, so, yeah, like to tell you about my journey, I suppose that's that's a little bit about my journey. And I, I will touch base with you again, I suppose, to tell you more as it as it grows. Um, and then, yeah, I found obviously found Eager Beaver um and i yeah i have a i have i have weird faith in eager beaver i had weird faith in eager beaver to everybody else it probably sounds like you know an ad but i i do have quite a bit of faith in this project just based on um the people running it um the people behind this project um their stories their fucker papa where they come from um what they do um and like their ability to pull off something like this roadmap um so yeah i i have this i have this crazy feeling that i actually believe it you know i just don't want to say it to everyone so they don't um you know freak out but i fully believe that this is going we're on the right side of history by being a part of eager beaver and i do think it's going to be one of the biggest projects in the next five years um if we hold on to it um but yeah i suppose um touching on Oh, bringing it back to basics, but actually, before we do that, does anybody sort of have any questions about what I might have already gone over, or um, my story, I suppose you would call it? Kia ora, bro. Um, Remo here. Um, thank you so much for that. I do have a, a question, just with what you were saying about how you wanted to make sure that our Māori, you know, our people are like almost like up to speed with everything because like this yeah. this is moving fast mm -hmm. i'm real grateful that we're all on here learning as quick as we can but i know what you mean about you know our generations to come to keep up to speed with things do you yeah. feel like this uh, this metaverse right that's such a big word but like this metaverse it feels a little bit like a clean slate like i feel like no matter what race or sexual orientation you are or anything like that, I feel like at the moment, everyone, it's like a um, equal playing field right now. Mm. Just whoever jumps in, jumps in. Whether you're Maori, whether you're Pakia, whether you're Indian, whether you're gay, straight, by, I feel like the clean slate is here for this new world. Is that, yeah. did you, do you get that vibe? Or, or, and like, it just kind of feels like, just get on ASAP. Yeah, you know I, mean? I, I do feel like that. I, I, I fully agree with that. Uh, it's similar to what happened in 2017. So for people, like for everyone that doesn't know, in 2017, they were going through a mega dip like we're going through in crypto right now. Yeah. But they've, they're still up from that dip. Um, You know, even though it's dipping right now and they're like down, say, if they've got Bitcoin, they're down like 30 grand right now. They're still up ten or twenty odd grand yeah. because the low, our low now isn't matching that, and it was a mega low um, yeah. at that time. And I think that was the mega low before it kind of kicked off. Same like anything, like a um, like a bow and arrow. First, it's got to go backwards before it flies forwards. Mm. Right now, we're we're on the drawback of the arrow. The thing that I'm actually worried about is when does that arrow release, and are we holding on to it? Are we flying mm -hmm. with that arrow or are we watching it fly away from us? Um, so yeah. I think I do agree with you now with everything being um, a clean slate. Everybody is on a level playing field. Um, and the thing that actually I suppose worries me about it is that a year from now or two years from now, the, the ability to get into cryptos, it's going to be harder. It's always going to get harder because the price is going to go up. Um, and regulations and stuff, eh? Yep. So the uh, centralization is definitely coming in. Yeah. You know, we're taking so much money away from the government. They're not going to just sit there and let it happen. So they're going to find a way to work with it and centralize a lot of the systems within Web3 and blockchain. Um, and that's going to happen super fast because they've got money to hire, you know, a thousand odd people to study yeah. it or whatever um, and things like that. So as much as it is a great time for us and it is a chill time, um, it's also a time that's not going to last forever. Yeah, 100%, um, brother. Yeah. 
And I do worry that, you know, in, in two years' time from now, it's going to cost too much for our people. Or they're going to look at it and look at the price of Ethereum, look at the price of things like Solana and Litecoin now that are quite not cheap, you know. They're, they're still about 200 bucks to get a full coin. But at that, in, in two years' time, three years' time, when everyone sort of catches on, every everything's roughly, all the good stuff now is roughly going to probably be sitting around Ethereum prices. Yeah. You know, all of the stuff that we're involved in now is all going to jump up and our whānau are going to have to, you know, pay more to mm -hmm. be a part of this, um, you know, kaupapa and, and things like that. So I do think it is, yeah, we, everyone, everyone's on a level playing field, absolutely. Um, but it is, a, it's definitely like the time, it's definitely the time to to learn, to do your rangahau, do your research, do your own research and learn about this space. Even if you're not investing, you don't have to invest yeah. in crypto, you know, at minimum invest in yourself. Just at least like, I was telling a mate last night, don't be too afraid of what's going on. Just jump in and, and uh, you don't understand what's going on. Fair enough. It is crazy, but just jump in because it's coming whether you want it to or not. It's happening. Yeah, hey. And, and you don't, you don't learn to ride a bike by looking at it. <laughs> hey, yeah, exactly. you, can learn, you can learn what all the parts do. You can definitely study what all the parts of a bike do. But can you hop on and can you pedal it? 100%. So for people who don't know anything about NFTs and this world is so new to them, how would you explain what an NFT is, brother? Okay, so an NFT, um, there's two ways to explain what an NFT is. Um, so a lot of people are just looking at NFTs and saying it's a picture and that they're right. They're not wrong. It is a picture. But what um, maybe I'll explain smart contracts first. So Fano, for those of us who don't know, a smart contract is the, I suppose, back end to the NFT, the stuff you don't see, the stuff that's coded into this NFT before you get it. So people um, like our developers of Eager Beaver right now will be working on the smart contract. So when we get the NFT or we get this picture or this ticket, um, we're able to use it and it does what they say it's going to do in the roadmap. Um, so basically, the smart contract behind an NFT gives it its functionality. Um, and an NFT could be anything. It can be a picture. Um, now it can be an album, it can be a song, it can be um, a voiceover, it can be video. Um, but a lot of people right now are actually going into the art space and that's where they're finding NFTs and that's where they're looking at it um, and they think it's an art space. So, um, yeah, so basically NFTs are like a ticket. Um, I believe the future of NFTs are almost going to be receipts. Um, so when you go and buy a brand new car, you don't buy a car anymore, you buy an NFT. That NFT allows you to drive the car off the lot, and that car now belongs to you because you're the NFT holder. Um, the thing behind it, um, that I, why I think it's going to have this, is because it allows people to um, have data on it like a warranty. You know, warranties don't go out. Warranties will be attached to the NFT. So you're able to go into the car store and say, hey, this is playing up on the car. Connect your wallet to their system and they should be able to fix it for you or look after it for you. I even think it will be integrated into the computers in the car. Um, that data will be able to be saved on your NFT. Um, so I do think there's 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 like NFTs are going to be, become a part of our normal life. Definitely. I hope that answers the question. Wow. Yeah, it does. It also ans asks a lot more questions. <laughs> nah, that's hard. That's hardcore. Um, I would love to just show a picture and then roll off in a, you know, Lamborghini or something like that. That would be dope. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think it's um, even going to be for groceries, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So NFTs, uh, it's almost like a key to that unlocks a whole lot of different um i don't want to say accesses or, or or discounts or something but it just allows you to do more things out there is that yeah, yeah so some so some do and some don't um like for example i i don't have one um but like you've got mr g who's an artist now he's a he's a world-renowned artist um and 
I don't know if his stuff does have utility because I'm not a holder. But more than likely, Mr. G, if he drops a collection with absolutely no utility, that's still going to be worth something in the future because he's a well-known artist. So 90% of NFT projects are probably going to crash because people are just putting their art out there, um, but they're not established artists and things like that. Um, so the value goes down, you know, when you on sell it, people are like, oh, well, I don't even know who this is, but it's a cool picture. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like imagine if, if Banksy, if Banksy dropped art NFTs. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So, so stuff like that would be worth, would be valuable. You yes. know, Banksy's first NFT, his Genesis collection would be the most valuable more than likely um, because it would be the first NFT from Banksy. Um, but yeah, so if, like, like famous artists, I suppose, their NFTs are still going to hold value. But the main thing that's going to, I suppose, create value in the NFT space um, is the ability to do things. Yeah. Like Eager Beavers, yes. we, we, we mint an Eager Beaver um, that gives us the ability to vote. To vote yes. on what the community does, what the roadmap may look like, um, you know, when they when they put out things like the whitelist, like how we um, thing on the whitelist, um, mm. we all agreed to have a whitelist. That'll only be for for eager beaver holders at some point, you know, after mint, um, and we'll be able to, cont or like you know, say hey, now I think this should happen. So we get to have a say um, in the roadmap. Um, also, it gives us the ability to go to these events. Um, to go yes. to the event that's going to be put on. Um, so would more than likely probably turn up, you know, connect our wallet or some guys there, you know, and views our wallet, views the code, boom, you're in. Yeah. Um, also things like uh, there's there's utility. There's a lot of projects that are doing it. Um, but like Eager Beaver, if you mint and you get certain attributes. So let's just, just for example, this is not happening, Fano. This is... Oh, I don't know if it's happening, but it's purely for example. But let's just say your eager beaver is wearing a Stan Walker necklace or a Stan Walker earring um, or the hidu that he's wearing in his, um, you know, that gives that gives you the ability to get royalties from maybe his next album. Um, I know that that's something they're, they're putting in, um, you know, royalties and things like that. So certain attributes, but that means that the, the guys in the background have had to work that into it, um, into the smart contract. So they've had to basically punch ones and zeros and code and everything like that to make that happen. So that's what the smart contract is, and that's actually what you're what you're purchasing. You're actually purchasing um, the stuff behind the picture. Um, yeah. That access to all of these spaces or to whatever um, utility this um, this NFT has. Nice. Now that makes a lot of sense, brother. Thank you. I might just wait. I think um, Amy Amy Queen had a question. Yes. Kia ora. Kia ora blockchain Māori. Thank you, Amir. Kia ora. Um, I just have a question. So running, sort of running off the back of what you've just um, explained to us, um, aside from the collective value uh, that each NFT holds, what can one do uh, once we mint our own NFTs, our Eager Beaver NFTs, what can one do to add individual value um, to our own NFTs? I think I'm some of them will... Um, <laughs> that's a really good question. It's hard to answer, but I think some of them will naturally come out with different values. Uh, there's this place called um, Rarity Tools, um, which kind of... It, it counts all the different attributes that... Um, that one NFT has. Um, so some things might come out with um, like different attributes and things like that. Um, and the rarity of, how do I explain rarity? So the rarity of um, the NFT is different. So it'll automatically kind of come unique. So everyone will be unique. I, I haven't really looked into or thought about how does one individually create more value, but I do see a gap, not a gap, but a gap, where, a space where we could do this um, because yeah. I do believe, um, quote me if I'm wrong, um, Brother Dre, but I do believe that when we get this NFT or when we mint this NFT, we get full IP to the beaver. Um, so if right. we've got full IP to the beaver, that basically means if I start a business, my logo of my business could be that beaver. 
Right. Yep. Yeah, that's that's exactly the answer I was yeah. going for. Um, yeah, and I think that's really good for everyone to know. Um, also, I feel, you know, if you have a rare NFT, a unique NFT, or a common NFT, um, from past experiences, I know some people got a bit upset that they received, uh, in other projects, they received uh, common NFTs, but my mm. facado and my views on them, on that situation was, it's not about the NFT itself it's about how you as yeah. the owner of this nft can yeah. add value to yours and just like you said um starting a business um and utilizing your nft within that business to you know uh, create your own royalties and royalties for those who um i don't know purchase from your business or whatever it may be yeah. uh yeah absolutely absolutely i think that's those sorts of things are possible um, and I do think, yeah, I do think in terms of value, like what does everybody see as value? You know, is it the NFT that's value or is it like you said, is it yourself? Because I honestly believe the value sits with us um, within this corridor and going back to a previous corridor. Um, the true, like, I suppose the true muscle, the true brains, the true everything behind any of these projects is actually the people. It actually comes down to the people and your own whakaro, you know, how you hold yourself in the community and things like that and, and what you experience and what you go through. You you create value, you know what I mean? And people are still trying to figure this out now to get themselves jobs. You know, how do I how do I seem valuable on a piece of paper so that this person hires me? Um, so it works the same. If you're willing to work on yourself and actually create value in the real world, I honestly do not see why it would not transfer into the nft space let's say you did um yeah like amy queen had a sick ass business that went off and her beaver was the beaver was your um was your logo if you went to go and sell that beaver how many of all of those people would want it you know would be yeah. like I want that one i want that specific one because she done this you know yeah yeah Tikatera. yeah Kapai, that was a really good question. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy with myself that I was able to. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm here for the answer. That was exactly it. I, in my, I actually knew the answer, but I know, you know, every question um, holds new information to somebody else. You know, along with every answer. So I knew that would be a real cool um, perk or you know, little piece of information for anyone who's completely new into the nft space to know what they could do when they finally mint their um eager beaver nfts and you know how they can create whatever they want with them and then you know we think about when we enter the metaverse and i say when because it will ha happen our mm -hmm. nft will enter the metaverse and there are so many business opportunities in there for each and every one of us so yeah like it, it would be a good time to start thinking about what you can do right now you know, when you mint your um, NFTs and create a roadmap for your individual or your however many NFTs you mint, um, you know, to start thinking about those things now so that when time comes, you're you're already on the ball. You're, you're already rolling. 100%. I can't agree with you more. No, oh, thanks, brother. All right. That's all from me. Thank you. <laughs> no, kia ora, kia ora. Cool. Does anybody else have any um any questions about NFTs they want to throw out, or do we have any in the chat? Uh, hey, blocks in Maori. Jenna here. Sure. Kia ora, bro. Um, me and Kōrero love what you're about, and your Instagram is fire. Um, I love the way you talk about the bow and arrow outlook and your co papa. So thank you for sharing your gems with us. Um. Just, just a question on the NFT process. Um, can you hear me all right? Yep. Um, so just going through the steps of, of buying an eager beaver NFT, um, I thought because I'm still kind of, it's, it's, it's still kind of, it's new to me and some of the process confuses me. So I thought I'd just um, confirm it. So one, you need a MetaMask wallet. Um, you need some Ethereum in your MetaMask wallet. Um, 
And the thing that confuses me, blockchain Moldy, is um, the open C. So my question is, is open C where you connect it to your MetaMask wallet? Um, do we need to create an open C wallet or uh, open C account or um, yeah, just the process around that, I guess. Okay, so if any of you have your wallet connected to OpenSea, disconnect it right now because they've got a bug. Um, Jenna, that was a really, really good question. <clears throat> so firstly, Fano, if you are connected to OpenSea, if you have a MetaMask wallet, you've got NFTs in it and you're connected to OpenSea, go into every OpenSea, go onto your laptop, go onto your phone and disconnect, um, log out. Basically log out, just like you're logging out of Facebook. You go into OpenSea. If you've already logged in, you go in and you log out. Um, so with OpenSea, I do. It, it's basically OpenSea is is a marketplace. So OpenSea is where you can buy NFTs. Some people put their collection on to OpenSea. Um, though Eager Beaver, I believe Eager Beaver is not going to do that. So they're going to have a minting website. Um, so basically, a minting website based off because none of us really truly know what this process is going to look like exactly until maybe tomorrow in the announcement and things like that um, but it's more than likely that they'll have a minting website um, I do remember it being mentioned um, and a minting website is quite basic um, on mint day it basically looks like a normal website and there's a big button in the middle that says mint um, you click on that button you collect your like let's say you've got a metamask if you've already got a metamask You've already put Ethereum onto the MetaMask um, and you've got enough for this NFT and to pay the gas. You would go on to, I think it's right up the top, it'll be eagerbeaverNFT.com. Um, you'd hit eagerbeaverNFT.com and there'll be, a, there'll be something there saying, Kia guys, this is the minting page, um, something like that. And you would just hit the mint button or uh, connect wallet button. Um, so either either sometimes the mint button's first, sometimes the collect wallet button is first. Um, but you'd connect your like you would connect your MetaMask to OpenSea. You would actually connect your MetaMask to the Eager Beaver website. So you would connect it to the Eager Beaver website, and then that would give you the ability to mint. Now, when you've minted, because you've connected your MetaMask wallet to the Eager Beaver website, when you hit the mint button, it'll come up with a bit of a contract. So it'll pop up and it'll say. I do you approve this um, and it'll connect you back to your MetaMask and you'll say yep I approve this it'll tell you exactly how much it's going to cost exactly how much the gas fees are going to cost and if you are okay with that then you press mint um, and basically that eager beaver should technically pop up in your MetaMask um, and your Ethereum should disappear and go to the eager beaver account Is awesome that... bro thank you yeah and for those of us who haven't um, maybe got a MetaMask yet or haven't figured out wallets, I do remember seeing a question um, about wallets. So they're quite easy to to set up. It's kind of like setting up Netflix, kind of like setting up Facebook and things like that. Um, but you want to have a few things ready. So you want to have a pen and a paper ready when you're setting up a wallet um, so you can write down your seed phrase. So a seed phrase is a bunch of words in, in a specific order. So you're going to set up your wallet. I think, I think there's a video, actually. There's a video of um, Rio setting up a MetaMask in the video section. It might actually be easier to just go watch this video. But basically, you set it up. You get given a seed phrase, a number, a, num a words, bunch of words numbered from 1 to 12 or 1 to 24. So it could be like goat, bus animal, tree, um, and etc, etc. Et you need to write those down. Um, it's probably best not to store together. A lot of people split them um, for safer storage. So if something does kind of get stolen, they don't have the full keys. So maybe six, um, six words in one place in a safety deposit box or wherever you want to keep yourself safe and one somewhere else, even if it's in the same house. Um, but that phrase there is never to be shared with basically anyone but yourself um and you want to keep that because if you lose your say your password to get into metamask on your phone or on your laptop you're going to need that seed phrase to get back in. that's the only way that you can get back in if you lose your login details um so that's the most important um part about 
I suppose getting yourself a wallet and getting a setup. But the, yeah, there's there's a video. Rio did um jam a video. Oh, Mama K Kapoi um has already posted up in the chat um where you can go and check that out. But yeah, Kapoi, Kilda Jenna. Hey bro, just um sorry, Jenna again. Um just going back to Open Sea. So you know how you're saying Open Sea is um the marketplace for NFTs. Um yeah. would you say it's like the equivalent to um, an exchange, what an exchange does with cryptocurrency? Pretty much. It's pretty much an NFT exchange. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sweet thing. Yeah. yeah. OpenSea is pretty much an NFT exchange. Like I, I, I do think because um, um, OpenSea does run with Ethereum mostly, they are trying to get Solana on board and Polygon, I think. Um, Beavers will eventually end up on, let's, I, I, I hope not. But people who want to sell their beaver would go to um, Open C to sell it. So if you're if if some if someone misses out on mint and they really really want a, a beaver, they'd probably go looking on Open C for for the secondary sale of a beaver. Um, so most times when um, projects mint or have a minting or landing page, a minting page, minting website, um, all secondary sales end up on a marketplace. And mostly open sea. Cool. So there's um is there different marketplaces for your different um uh blockchains like Ethereum runs on open sea? Um is that right? Or yeah, there's heaps. There are so many like um there's heaps of like decentralized ones as well, like um ones that are kind of hidden, like you've kind of gotta go exploring to find a lot of them. Um, but I know like with graph grims, um, I'm only speaking because that's one of like, that's the most NFTs I've got is I just bought heaps and heaps of graph grims because I really like them. Um, they are on paint swap. So you have to find them on paint swap. You won't find them on, um, on open sea. So you have to look on paint swap if you want to find those. So the best way is to find out what blockchain, um, what blockchain the NFT has been minted on or is living on. Um, and then find the closest blockchain or find the marketplace, the main marketplace for that blockchain, and you'll more than likely find it. But most of them are on open seas, so it's yeah, pretty pretty easy to 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 find most of the big um big projects. Awesome, brother. Thank you. Um just one other question too. Um I'm not sure if you can answer this. Uh and I might just wait for the next AMA. Um but to my understanding, uh, there's 950 spots on the whitelist uh, for eager beavers, uh, 750 eager beaver spots, 200 queen eager beaver spots, and um, we can only be on one whitelist um, and have two NFTs per wallet, bro. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but my question is, um, since you can only be on one whitelist, uh, does anyone know, does that mean that we can only mint either two uh, king eager beavers or two queen eager beavers? Or is is there an option where we can have one each? I think I've missed it. Um, I'm not sure if anyone can answer that. No, you're correct. I do remember having a, um, having a call with the with the guys about it. Um, so, and I think Rio did jam it in one of the um, AMAs, but um, I think they're going to have two mints. Dre, is that correct? Two mints? First mint being the um, eager beavers and second mint being the eager beaver queens? I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. I'm like 99% sure that you can only mint. You, you, if you're on the whitelist for the eager beavers, you, you're minting eager beaver. If you're on the whitelist for the eager beaver queens, you'll be minting an eager beaver queen. Awesome. Thanks, bro. Thank yeah, you I'll for your... I'll just jump on bro that, yeah, that's definitely 100% correct. You can only mint um, two kings or two queens, and the the king beavers will be going first, and the second beavers, uh, queen beavers will be going second. The reason behind that is because um, the queen beavers came in second, and it was actually voted from our queens, um, from the big guns upstairs, Rio and Kings, um, the queens were making a lot of noise about queen beavers so they went ahead and done a voting poll um 
and I think if I can recall it was to get 300 reactions within 48 hours which we smashed um, so then we got our queen beavers um, but yeah unfortunately that means it does come with a different coding system um, which you know they've had to go in and put in that extra work for us now um, which we all appreciate um, and we've had Leslie um, design our queen beavers which are yeah. super dope um, so a lot of work does actually go into um, making these nfts and coding them etc etc um, so our community is super super dope for um you know just thinking of us and and making this an option um, because it is hard work behind the scenes um, and yeah so it will be only the two kings first and then the queen second Awesome, thank you, Kazi. Okay, Childa. And then nothing's nothing saying that you can't um get your your partners involved, you know, get your partners involved to to double up, you know, get your partner jump in, um, and get get an extra two beavers. So between you and your partner, you can you can possibly have four beavers. Um, so that is an option as well. But yeah, I think that kind of. <coughs> Maybe wraps me up, I th unless there's a few more questions. I do have a question, brother. Cool. This is just taking it straight back to like basic 101s. I just, because I know there's some queens in here who, who aren't too sure. Can you explain to us? Um, this is a hard one. Can you explain to us what blockchain is, what a blockchain is, how blockchains work? Because um, I only just discovered that. Ethereum, this is going to make me sound a little bit dirt, but Ethereum and ETH are so different. Ethereum is the, is the blockchain, right? And then ETH is the, the currency. So yeah. I didn't even know that till about two days ago. Um, but can you just explain to us what a blockchain is and, and, and stuff like that, please? Cool. So um, like my view on blockchain is similar to Papa. So I like to look at blockchain as Papa of the block. Um, so basically it's a data system or it's a data collection system um, and a block is created. So you've got to do a big coding course to, to create a block and things like that. Um, but wait, basically once the, once the first block is created, um, there's a, a, an, I suppose there's a system that they have um, inside these blocks, which when a new block is created, when the second block on this blockchain is created, it also has a code which matches the first block, which is called the hash. Um, so it matches the first block, and that allows, um, I suppose, safety or like you know the ability because you would have to hack everybody at the same time to be able to change these blocks. Um, so basically, um, with blockchain, so Web three and Web two, um, Web two is basically the internet that we have at the moment. Um, for an organization like Facebook. They need a 10-story building to store all of their computers, to store all of their data. Um, so every message, every message sent on Facebook is actually stored on these big computers in a big warehouse somewhere. With Web3 um, and blockchain, it actually stores all the information on everyone's devices. So if you've got Ethereum in your wallet right now, you are contributing to Ethereum living. Um, so basically it lives on everybody's system. So as opposed to being in one place where you can just hack into that mega computer and change things up, you would have to hack into everybody's computer at the same time um, to be able to change things. Now people have hacked in and changed blocks um, in the blockchain system, but it's got a <coughs> sorry, funny, a consensus protocol or what it's called. It's called a consensus protocol. But basically, all the technology talks to each other. And if I was to hack one computer and change the block, um, all of the other computers would be like, nah, bro, that's wrong. And it'll change it back. So the, basically, the hacker is sitting there fighting with the blockchain to change it. Because the blockchain, 90% is still exactly the same. So they'll, they would change. So if 10% of the blockchain, 20%, 30%, 40% of the blockchain is changed by hackers, the rest, the, um, the majority percentage will just change it all back. So it'll basically just say not nah, and not agree with whatever's going on and basically 
give the image that they have back to all of those computers. Um, yeah, I hope that kind of kind of makes sense. So that's like a little bit of Web three and blockchain, but like yeah. blockchain, I see it as fucker popper. Um, yeah. You know, you add data, you add data, and then the block fills up, and then you can't add any more data. Yeah. Um, so it produces another block. Um, yeah. And that fucker popper is always there. Like our fucker popper is always there. It's in our blood and it's in our people. Um, the blockchain's fucker popper will always be there, and you can always go back and look and view everything that's on the blockchain. Right. That's a really good um, metaf- uh, analogy, actually. Using the fucker papa because, like, obviously you can't change your fucker papa, so you can't change yeah. the blockchain, right? Yeah. And same, like, if you're at a marae, you know, and one person goes, oh, yeah, you know, I fucker papa to this person through this person. And all the komatua look at each other and go, oh, actually, boy, um, it's like, this is how our fucker papa goes, you know? And then every, and then the komatua queer correct that person. And then that person now has the, um, you know, has that knowledge. Um, so that's why I suppose I kind of look at it as fucker popper. Nice, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I'll um, <laughs> see if anyone else has any more questions. If any queens out there have any other questions about maybe about wallets or security or um, uh, anything at all, then anything definitely. Hey, bro, Jenna here again. Kilda. <laughs> Kilda. Shot um, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just still trying to get my head around the open sea, like, you know, just for the future NFTs that I decide to buy, etc. Um, just with the open sea, um, do you think it's good practice to disconnect it from your MetaMask wallet or any marketplace once the NFT is in your MetaMask wallet to disconnect the marketplace, if that 100%. makes sense? 100%. I okay. believe in not even not even open sea anything you connect your wallet to whatever website you jump on whatever site um you connect your metamask to get in the habit of logging out before you actually close that site down with anything Copo, that awesome. really- it usually logs out um on its own anyway oh well my one my one does um but i also just wanted to throw out there that we sorry about that um feedback fano i also wanted to throw out there that uh there is another um like somewhat open sea sort of uh copapa being developed at the moment called defi market uh it's called it's decentralized finance um and it is run by a man called lord fositua he is tongan um and it highlights our poly people um, but it will also be a very similar space to um, OpenSea. So if you guys want to go and do your own research and look into it and, you know, yeah, um, DeFi Market on IG or I'm not sure if they've got a website at this point, but that's another good space to look at and just keep up with um, until they launch their um, their space. So, yeah. Oh boy, I'm gonna write that one down. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Um, I've been following them for just over a month, and they've not long. They not long. Um, I mean, I know they've been working on it for a while, but they're starting to really uh, come through and uh, highlight the mahi that they do and the services that they provide. Um, and yeah, it's really, it's really amazing. Also, being you know a poly run um co-papa, which I know all of us are here for our own for our people um so yeah i think um it'll be great for everybody to go check that out defi d-e-f-i market on ig we did have a question pop through um in the chat what's with people stealing nfts using weath w-e-t-h is there a difference between i have never heard of that coin before either um, I feel like I'm... it. I feel like that might be similar to when <laughs> the Trillionaire Thugs had a uh, scam project called the Trillionaire Thags. So, <laughs> so I think yeah, I think it's just another one of those little systems going on there. But uh, definitely don't use Weath, um, especially. <laughs> is, that if... what, 
is that what scammed Justin Bieber? Trillionaire yes. thags. He he was he was airdropped an NFT uh, a thag, um, which yeah, he obviously lost a lot of money um, to that, but yeah. Thank God that won't happen to us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that. Uh, but that's the other thing, guys, is just, you know, um, to really stay aware of where you're, um, where you're, you know, minting your NFTs and what the co-papa is behind each NFT. Do your research um, and make sure you've got all your, um, you know, your security systems in, spa- uh, in place. Uh, so I use a, um, a system called Nord. VPN and that protects me in any sort of um, Wi-Fi or mobile data space that I use. So it's like an overall coverage. I pay for it. I use I use my cryptocurrency to pay for it, which is a bonus. Um, but yeah, so Nord N O R D is another thing on top of Pro- Proton Mail, and um, I'm sure other other queens and kings here will have um, different security measures uh, that they'll be able to share with you as well. But yeah, so Proton Mail and Nord are really great um, security uh, measures to put in place for your cryptocurrencies, your NFTs, and just keeping them all safe and locked in. And again, can't stress it enough, always disconnect from your from OpenSea when you have minted. Once, you're, once you see your NFTs are in your MetaMask, please disconnect in the session. Oh, killed her. Yeah, I, can't, I I agree with you. I can't yeah can't stress enough how important safety is, Fano. So Proton Mail is um is an encrypted email. VPNs encrypt all of your doings, Fano. Um, so that I suppose hackers have a harder job viewing what you're up to on your device. So if you don't have these, in like people can kind of hack into your computer and check out what you're doing and sit there and wait for you to punch in your password and now they know your password sort of thing so vpn kind of stops them from viewing your stuff um i would recommend someone um purple pride killed up um chuck two fa two uh two factor authentication um i think that's important for everything that you've got money on value in um set up uh two fa um, even set up phishing codes. Uh, a lot of the sites let you do phishing codes. Um, so that kind of is an extra layer of safety. And I would say for MetaMask Fano for NFTs, because it is now available, get yourself a hardware wallet um, for your long term savings. So if you're going to save uh, crypto for long term, I would recommend putting it in a hardware wallet because um, it's cold storage and it's not online. Um, and also, you you have the ability now to connect Ledger, um, which is one of the hard one of the many hardware wallets, um, that you can actually connect that to MetaMask for an extra layer of safety um, on MetaMask. So yeah, hardware wallets are definitely important, Fano. But yeah, mean. Um, I have just one more question, brother. Sorry, I know we've got a. Um... VC with Mellow Downs at eight, but what would be your top three tips um, for people who are new to the space, new to uh, NFTs and minting and wallets and all this kind of stuff? What would be like your top three go-to tips for um, someone new in this space if they were about to mint for um, for an eager beaver? Top five, top three, research. Research number one, research, do your research, Fano, read up about stuff, watch videos and things like that. Um, but research, you know, suss everyone out. Even go to all of, uh, you can click on a lot of the, um, the leads behind the project's accounts and some of them have their Instagram account. Go suss them out, Fano. Go check out their Instagram, see what type of person they are. You know, are they a family person or are they all about, you know, wearing big chains and gold chains and stuff like that, you know? Try and suss out the ahua of these people before you give money to them. Um, but, you know, you'll, 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 I suppose, have that sort of um, feeling. You can't fully suss somebody out online. Um, but do your research, Fano. Um, research NFTs. Research all of these kupu that we spoke of um, that we're not um, diving deep into. Research what NFTs are. 
find out multiple spaces that explain what NFTs are, Fano. Don't just go to one source. Um, so research is tip number one. Tip number two is back to safety. Make sure everything's safe. Make sure you've got two-factor authentication set up. Make sure your passwords are safe. Make sure your passwords are hidden. Make sure nobody can see them. Never copy passwords onto your computer, onto your phone. Never, ever copy these um, seed codes. Never, ever copy and paste the seed code, Fano, because then they just need to hack your computer. Um, so safety, Fano, research, um, safety, and research safety measures. So research what it is, what, what are the safety measures. Um, so that's tip number two. Tip number one, rangaho. Tip number two, safety. Um, and tip number three, I had it a moment ago. <clears throat> but my mind changed it to have fun. Have fun, <laughs> Fano. Um, you know, enjoy this space. Um, use this space now before, you know, there's so much value in this space now um, before Mint and things like this, you know, network, fine, if you've got a bizzo, jump in the bizzo chat and drop your business, um, you know, let people, let people know who you are, what you're about, and things like that, um, but have fun, and, and, oh, there it is, I remember exactly what tip three is now, here it goes, Fano. do not click the link, tip number three, do not click any links that anybody sends to you, get used to not sending links to people, um, because that's the way that hackers and scammers are getting in these days. If you show a little bit of interest in NFTs, you're going to start getting messages from people saying, check out this, listen, look at this, hey, look at this project. Um, hey, some of them might be all right, and some of them might be, it might be a marketing tactic, but I would highly recommend to not click on any of them. Um, and if you actually do think that a project is, is cool, go and research the project. Don't go through that link. You know, the name of the project's up, so as opposed to going through the link, go and research the project um, and check it out from another avenue. Um, so yeah, tip number one, research Fano. Tip number two, safety. And tip number three, don't click the link. I love that. Those are all so vital and important. <laughs> um, thank you, brother. If there are any other last minute questions from any queens out here that just might have something on their minds, now's your time. Kapai. Oh, well, I suppose I would really, really like to thank you um, so much for having me in this space. It's been a good yarn. Again, thank you to the um, to the ladies that, um, you know, invited me into into mm -hmm. your guys' space, into your guys' whare. Um And thank you so much for having me and, um, you know, and, and engaging with me and not leaving me hanging, hanging silent. So um, thank no you so much, Fano. Now, thank you so much for being here with us. And just for the Queen's Know, Blockchain Māori, he's on Instagram. You can search that, Blockchain Māori. I've been on there on his Instagram page. Um, and it's really helpful. You can just pop back every now and then and you'll learn something 100%. So definitely give him a follow. He's obviously an eager beaver. So he's very active in the Discord. You can ask him questions anytime. Yeah. Um, but nah amazing gems that you dropped on us and all the queens that ask questions as well things that i didn't even know like using a nft to represent yourself out here in the real world and in the metaverse like mind blowing instantly i was like whoa didn't even know you could do that so um really grateful for that for that chat and that corridor as well so thank you so much blockchain maori for being here um i'm just going to quickly throw it to my sister Valentino mm -hmm. as well See if she's what's if she's here. Hey, I'm here, Queen. Perfect. Um, cool. No, thank you so much, Blockchain Molly. I know that you um you know, told yourself you weren't gonna, you know, come into the Queen's um area, but um you're always welcome, brother, and we appreciate your knowledge, um, your knowledge oh, bombs and and all the gems you're dropping for us because um at the end of the day, you know, we're all learning and we all want to grow and we all wanna um you know be successful. Um so thank you so much. Um and just before we do end this um cordial, I just wanted to remind everyone that um there will be more knowledge bombs um dropped tomorrow from um, Rio, who is going to touch on 
and announce our mint day um, that's tomorrow night so he'll cover the mint price um, and he's going to do that in fiat currency which is like regular money um, so we're still using ETH but we're, we're, he's giving us a little guide to use fear um, to prepare so that we can save. Um, obviously, if you listen to his chat, uh, maybe a couple of days ago, he um, touched on this. Um, and it's just like a little, um, let's say, financial guidance around how to save so that you're, um, everyone's able to purchase an NFT. Um, so... So yeah, he'll drop that on Monday. Um, so it might be a little bit confusing, but just just ask heaps of questions. Like we encourage questions, 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 because um, everyone will probably have the same question, but might be too shy to ask. Um, you can always PM me and Remo AAA um, if you're a bit shy on that. Um, but yeah, tomorrow night, um, Rio will release the mint day. Um, you'll know. Um, how much to save in uh, regular money, so New Zealand dollar, um, and then once it switches over to the ETH, it'll be equivalent. Um, and he'll also be dropping a education roadmap, so that's going to be a shitload of content um, to help prep you for Mint Day. Um, and just if you're unsure about anything, it's going to be all within our Discord, just like um, they spoke about earlier with the videos to jump on and um, watch the videos as well, um, just to upskill and um, obtain more knowledge so that you're um, at ease when it comes time to mint um, and purchase an NFT. Um, what else? I think that's about it. Um, but yeah, does anyone else have any questions? If not, we might just close it off so that uh, everyone can have a little break before we prepare to listen to our brother, um, Mello at 8 p.m. Nah, I'm good. I'm ready for this chat. Mm, me too, me too. Yeah, excited to hear the bro. Um, and definitely be there tomorrow, Fano. That's probably one of the most important AMAs. Heaps of information will be out tomorrow. Mm. I agree. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that'll be us. But yeah, just keep an eye out for that education roadmap as well because it will have pretty much everything that you want to know um, heading towards Mint Day with wallets, Proton Mail, um, loading money into your wallet, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, cool. Remo, is that, that us? That's us, girl. That's us, queens. Thank you so much, everyone jumping in. Make sure you jump back in in the main chat for our 8 p.m. VC with Mellow and Beans. Yeah. Thank you, Mano. Awesome. Thank you, queens. Thank you, too. Thank you, Blockchain Māori. Appreciate you. Thank you, Zen. You too. Thanks, brother. Thank <laughs> you.